light painting is a really interesting form of non-traditional photography. It's completely unlike the photography you already know and love because you're shooting at night and you create your own light source. The rules of photography that you already know do not apply when it comes to night photography and especially light painting. The setup is fairly simple. All you need is a tripod and a camera with some form of manual mode or a shutter speed priority mode. And then you need a light source. You can do this in a hundred different ways. You could use sparklers, you can use glow sticks like I'm going to use, torches, you can use your phone screen. The list goes on. It's all about being creative. You can also use torches and you can go ahead and paint light all over this building and do all kinds of interesting things. I would just stress that you don't overthink it and you don't try and add too many different styles of lighting. If I add sparklers and glow sticks, well, that can start to look a little bit ridiculous. But if I take my time and I just use one light source, well, then you can get much more polished looks to your end result. So I'm gonna set up my camera here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use manual mode. Now you could use shutter speed priority mode too, but I like manual mode when I'm shooting at night because everything is non-traditional. Look at what we're shooting. We're shooting at night and I'm creating my own light source. I'm gonna use manual mode and I'm gonna set my shutter to 30 seconds. You could do it for shorter. You can do it for longer if you want to use bulb mode, but 30 seconds is a good target to go for because that gives you plenty of time to run around. Now, if I run around this scene with some light sources like these glow sticks, you might think that the camera would pick me up. It's not going to pick me up. And the reason for that is because during a 30 second exposure in low light like this, I'm not in the scene long enough for the camera to pick me up. I'm just gonna be a very, 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 very faint blur, if anything at all. So 30 seconds of a long exposure at nighttime allows me to play around like this. Now that I've set my shutter speed to 30 seconds, I also need to adjust my ISO and my aperture. And what is it going to be? Well, looking at this scene, and I know the only light source is gonna be this tiny amount of glow stick light. I should imagine I probably want an aperture as wide as it will go. And on this camera and lens, the 1300D with the 18 to 55, that's gonna be F3.5. But I don't think ISO 100 is really going to cut it for a photo like this. I'm going to have to turn the ISO up. So I'm going to set this just as a starting point to 1600 ISO. That might not be enough. Maybe in my next photo I need to come back and add more, but it's all about experimenting. If your photos come out underexposed, well then you need to increase your ISO or increase your shutter duration. If after increasing everything, you find your photos are still underexposed. Well, then I would challenge you to try a different light source or fix it in post. Now, you're not supposed to suggest fixing it in post in a training video like this, but I will say that in low light conditions, when your photos come out underexposed, oftentimes I'm gonna get better image quality if I increase the exposure in Lightroom than I am if I increase it in my camera. So that's what I typically do. And of course, I'm shooting in RAW here like I do with all of my photography. That gives me more leeway when it comes to edit them later. So these lights are attracting about a thousand bugs, no lie, about a thousand bugs right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn these lights off. I'm gonna hit go on a 30 second exposure. I'm gonna take some more glow sticks that I have here and I'm gonna take some time to experiment and light this little house and the little shrubs that are, are near it too. There's many different ways you can do it. You can plant these glow sticks in the ground so that they're hidden but they're illuminating it. You can run around and wave them around and do whatever you like. And I'm gonna try a bunch of different photos. One more thing, I am of course using manual focus in this photograph. To try and use autofocus at night is a recipe for disaster. Let's go ahead and get started. So 
So I've taken my first photo and it actually came out great, just as I was hoping it would. However, I totally overshot the exposure. ISO 1600 was definitely too high. We actually have a lot more light pollution around here than I realized. So I'm gonna turn the ISO down all the way to 100 now and we'll go from there because I don't want my night photography to look like it was shot during the day. So we're gonna do that again and I'm gonna turn the ISO down. We just had a lot of fun experimenting with some light painting. It's really simple when you get the hang of it. All you need to do is stand in the frame and play around with a light source. I ended up writing my name, and that's a little trickier than you'd imagine because you have to spell it backwards and mirrored image, and it's not that easy, but you can write your name in the lights just by picking up a light source like this and doing J-O-S-H, and you can put your name using just a light source. My final photo, I did my name with a light, and then I picked up all the other glow sticks, and I put them all on the floor before the photo started, and at the end, I ran around, I picked them all up, and I threw them out of the frame, like that. And we ended up getting this light flying out of the picture with my name in it. Hey, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing too. We're releasing new video content every Monday at 12 p.m. London time every week of the year. So you'll see much more video content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.